Hello, my name is Jo fernhead Wims. I'm Patient Engagement Director at Ashfield Healthcare Communications. Um, and I'm going to speak to you this morning about how we at Ashfield are putting patients at the centre of our business, um, which is part of our mission of improving lives. Um, so what I'm going to cover is how the pharmaceutical industry and indeed the companies that serve the pharmaceutical industry are evolving to really put the patient at the centre of what they do, um, why that's important and how we are responding to that. Um, and then I'm going to just finish by illustrating some of the ways that we can do better uh, within our business by focusing on the patient and on patient need. So what is patient centricity? What is patient engagement? Um, to a large extent, it is the latest buzzword. Um, certainly a year, two years ago, it was perhaps just a buzzword. Um, and we've seen an increase in the media coverage and um, results that you will get through an internet search when you put in the words patient centricity. Companies are, are making all sorts of different moves to embrace this and, and weave this into their business. But what I want to talk about is how that's happening and what kind of difference that is making um, in terms of the way we deliver the work that we do. Um, certainly there are a number of um, quite different drivers um, and motivations within the industry towards this more patient-centric model. Um, the first and perhaps the most important being the informed patient. Um, and I think um, it's no secret that patients generally are becoming much more engaged in their own health care, in their own health care outcomes, really want to have a say in the treatment and their management plan for their, for their disease or their condition, um, and might really want to have their own goals and objectives recognised within that treatment plan. Um, and some of that comes hand in hand with technological advances. Patients are beginning to innovate some of their own solutions to their own health care challenges, and, and technology has been a real part of that, that growth as well. Um, certainly for our clients, for pharmaceutical companies, innovating is becoming much, much harder. Um, and I think we've all had experience of, of um, contact with teams or products where they're fourth or fifth to market in a crowded space. And actually being able to identify a genuine unmet need and develop solutions or wraparound services that, that meet that need is really going to add value to patients and to the care that they receive and, and, and lead to better outcomes. I think when we think about healthcare systems and the crunch in spending and the ways in which payers are looking for more value um, and really more real world evidence and patient reported outcomes in terms of the types of products and, and treatments they're willing to reimburse, we really need to make sure that we can work with the pharmaceutical industry to stay future fit really and remain relevant um, in not just five years time but 10, 20, 50 years time. Um, and finally, um, certainly a key driver for me is, is the notion of doing the right thing. And it might seem a little soft and fluffy for the pharmaceutical industry to be, to be um, driven by this. But, but actually, there is a real appetite um, within, within pharmaceutical companies to really embrace this, um, this need to do the right thing. And certainly, when you're thinking about people starting a career within um, pharmaceuticals or even within um, medical communications, for example, quite a lot of people do cite that they want to make a difference to healthcare outcomes outcomes to patient outcomes so there's an opportunity here to really um, embrace that and, and use that as, as a motivator um, and for those who are driven a little bit more by the figures by the bottom line by profit actually it makes really good commercial sense as well um, and 546 billion dollars um, which is a figure that um, I find staggering every time I look at it. This is estimated um, revenue lost annually to the pharmaceutical industry through non-adherence to medication. So this is likely patients who either don't fulfil prescriptions, um, don't take their treatment correctly, don't know how to take it, perhaps find the treatment schedule overly burdensome and mistreatments and so on. Um, so that's clearly a commercial opportunity. Um, which will not just improve our ability to grow our companies, but actually also improve healthcare outcomes and, and actually improve um, the, the results that we see from, from the treatments that we're asking um, payers to reimburse. Certainly within Ashfield Healthcare Communications, we've seen a real shift in the way our clients are asking for expertise in this space. And I think perhaps 12 months ago, 18 months ago, it might have been, uh, if we had an RFP in, for example, it might have been the 10th bullet point in a list of many other things and, and, and not really an area of focus. But actually what we've seen um, increasingly is that we have whole RFPs, whole um, scopes of work really focused on patient engagement and, and how... Um, particularly within medical affairs functions, for example, how that is being built into everyday delivery within pharmaceutical companies. And what we're finding is clients are expecting us to not just respond to that, but really speak their language and share their vision in terms of how they want to engage with patients to improve outcomes. 
So within Ashfield Healthcare Communications, um, we've really had a focus on this for perhaps 18 months, two years now. Um, and that's really been in four broad areas. We assembled a kind of expert team, our patient centre of excellence team, um, who had um, these four areas of focus. The first being to shift our focus internally and culturally, really, to be quite patient focused, quite patient centred. And I think people working within the medical communications industry, um, there might be a lot of people for whom that's not really been a focus um, previously, um, but it's certainly becoming so. And, and that goes from kind of publications accounts, medical affairs accounts, um, more commercial consumer accounts, um, really across the board, and um, how we can bring um, patient centric thinking into the work that we do. We provide um, patient insight and expert support across um, the various parts of our business. And we're also doing our own work with patient advocacy groups, um, not just through our clients and the, the projects that we deliver for them, but um, within um, our agencies and within our digital and creative teams, we're, we're forging relationships with a range of patient advocacy groups and expert patients so that we know that when we're talking about patients and patient insight, we're speaking from a, from a, from a place of understanding. Um, and finally, we've done a lot of work collaborating with the pharmaceutical industry, with our clients, to really understand their needs and expectations as they evolve and we hope to evolve with them. And one of the ways that we've done that is um, 12 months ago we had a Patient and Pharma Future Forum. And this was um, an online panel. It ran for two weeks um, and we posed a series of questions to um, clients from 12 pharmaceutical companies. And the individuals were um, usually in a role chief patient officer. These new roles that have sort of begun to evolve, uh, begun to be seen across um, pharmaceutical companies, chief patient officers, head of patient affairs and so on. Um, it was moderated by Ashfield and also by Andrew Shaw from Patient Power. And what we were asking our clients was really um, three broad topics. Um, how they were working patient centricity and patient engagement into their vision and strategy and frameworks and so on. Um, then a little bit more detail about how they were actually delivering that, how they were making that happen on a day-to-day -day basis and, and, um, and cascading that down into different teams and functions. And finally, what that meant in terms of their needs from vendors such as um, Ashfield, um, what they were expecting us to be able to um, provide and support in that space. And what we learnt from that was that actually everybody is getting in, on board with this, with patient centricity, with patient engagement. There were no companies on our panel who said, you know, we're not, we're not looking at this, we're not doing this, we're not interested. Um, ab actually, everybody was, was making quite a bit of progress, but in quite different ways. And certainly 12 months ago, we saw a bit of a difference between larger pharmaceutical companies with broad product portfolios versus smaller companies who had quite a specialised portfolio. Um, they were approaching it in quite different ways, which was really interesting to see. I think in the 12 months since then, we've seen a little bit more alignment. Um, but companies are, are really beginning to bring in patient insight into almost everything that they do. Um, quite a lot of alignment on what needs to be done, but certainly perhaps a lack of, although growing confidence in how to do it. Um, and companies are certainly looking for expertise from, from agencies, from vendors like Ashfield. And we feel that um, from our perspective, we're really well placed to support this because of the breadth of our services. So um, we have our insights team, market research, who can, who can help us with that upfront understanding through strategy development, content development, of course, and digital and creative. Um, and right the way through to our clinical team who deliver nursing support and they're obviously talking to patients and, and interacting with patients day to day. So in terms of the breadth of our services, we wanted to make sure we could join these together in a way that was going to really add value to what we provide for our clients and ultimately the, uh, what we can do to support patients. So in terms of what we are delivering, it's broadly divided into inputs and outputs and um, the inputs is really how we can understand the patient experience and the patient journey and how we can use that understanding to design better solutions and that understanding might be from market research, it might be from other kinds of insights gathering, it might be social media monitoring um, and, and landscape analysis and so on and really understanding that unmet need. And then moving across to the right hand side, um, looking at outputs. So what that means in terms of the way we communicate with patients, the way we engage with patients, and also how we support healthcare professionals in the way that they engage with patients, for example, in understanding um, pa target patient segments for particular treatments and so on. 
And what we know is that, well, traditionally when we talked about patient segments and patient profiles, we might have been talking about their clinical profile, so the kind of disease they have, the kind of treatment they've been on, how they've responded to treatment, what kind of adverse events they've experienced. But actually, what's just as important in terms of a patient outcome is, is the patient's personal profile, so how engaged they are in their health care, how, how health literate they are, how educated they are, and, and how how positively they want to engage in, in, in achieving their own outcomes. And again, they might have their own objectives that are important for them. And so we build all of this together um, to create a patient profile. And only when we've done that can we start to think about what is the, the objective for what we're trying to do um, and what's the best way to do that for this particular patient. So, so that understanding is really important and we always start with the insights piece, the understanding to make sure that we can use that to develop really tailored individualised solutions that, that meet the needs of patients and, and are really going to lead to those improved outcomes through behaviour change. So if we look at the industry for a moment, um, traditionally I think patients haven't um, been a big part of, of pharmaceutical companies thinking, although clearly they've always been there as the end user of a product. But when we think about the, the, the life cycle of a drug and how our businesses work, how companies develop the products that, that eventually make it to market, um, it's quite hard to see how and where the patient fits into this. You can't simply map a patient journey over that. And if we look at the patient experience, it's certainly very, very different. It's quite confusing. Um, patients can go around in circles. They will need to draw on different types of support at different times. And for every individual patient, this is a, a completely different journey and a completely different experience. Um, so it, it's not a straightforward thing to do. It's a challenge. Um, but what we do know is that when we start to think about the patient at the centre, um, we do then start to make better decisions about the things that we're doing within our businesses. So whether it's designing um, a clinical trial that is optimised for patient concordance so that the burden of participating in the trial is minimised, um, that the trial has um, endpoints or outcomes that are not just re patient reported outcomes but are actually relevant to patients so that we're communicating data from our studies in a way that's meaningful for patients and we're developing for example support programmes that, that really do actually speak to patients' challenges and questions and meet their needs. And it might be that it's not just about a pharmaceutical product, it might be about a device or delivery system that's, that's really a key part of that patient experience and a key challenge for patients um, with that condition. So as we look at the life cycle, what we've been doing within Ashfield is um, looking at ways that we can support our clients with bringing patient thinking um, in throughout that life cycle and really thinking about the value that that's going to bring to their work. So as I mentioned a moment ago, um, Looking at the complete product offering and actually identifying a genuine unmet need and again the frustration of being fourth or fifth to market with a product that, that is almost identical to, uh, to several others, um, there are better ways that we can do this and, and identifying and understanding that unmet need up front is a really important part of that. Um, as we move along, continuing to gather those insights and really understand the landscape and understand the patient experience puts us in a much better position to develop a product in a way that is going to be of value to patients. And as we move into the clinical trial setting, looking at how we design studies in a way that, um, that speaks to patients' needs, that, that is not overly burdensome, and certainly providing the kind of communication and support throughout a clinical trial that is really going to address patients' needs and help them to stay engaged and retained within the study if that's the right thing for them. Um, how we communicate results of, of, of clinical trials to patients is, is another key area and certainly the upcoming um, legislation around lay summaries will be a part of that but it's not it's not the whole story, it's not the whole picture. Um, and so I think companies are really now beginning to think a lot more carefully about how we communicate um, not just individual results of studies, but how that fits within um, the general disease landscape, um, how we communicate around patient preference and patient reported outcomes, um, and how we communicate um, not just studies, but for example, lay summaries from publications, which is something that journals are increasingly asking for. So again, that's another way that that's been worked into um, the, the, the services that Ashfield provide for our pharmaceutical clients. And as companies approach launch with a product, um, really understanding what the patient perceptions are going to be of that molecule. So it might be that it's that it is similar to existing products on the market in that space, but there is a, an added value or 
um, a, a, an identifier that is going to make it really meet a, an unmet need. It might be that um, a company is, is new in a therapy area and whilst patients are very comfortable with existing treatments, they, they've never really had any treatments from this company. So working with our clients to understand that perception piece and how we can um, maximise understanding and disease awareness to really um, speak to what patients need and are looking for. And then as a, patient, as a, a product is um, approaching launch and, and being launched, um, looking at how we can provide those support services, that wraparound um, added value um, service that, that's really going to optimise outcomes. So whether that's patient support programmes with nursing support, whether that's educational materials, disease education and so on, whether it's peer-to-peer -peer support, um, really looking at the ways that we can do that to really add value to the patient experience and, and actually then to improve outcomes. Um, and so finally, um, looking at measurement, um, I think it's fair to say this is the big challenge. Um, and certainly when we talk to our clients about patient engagement, this is the big unanswered question. It's kind of the holy grail of patient engagement. How do you measure it? Um, and I think if we look at the way we've worked in the past, we have these traditional outcome measures. So we can, you know, we, we've all done feedback and evaluation metrics and so on and how that's done internally and externally. And also the numbers of people or patients accessing um, a resource, whether that's education, whether that's patient support and so on. Um, but, but those those measures in the green box, they don't really give us enough understanding and insight and don't really tell us enough about how we're, have, how we're impacting on the patient experience. Um, and what we've seen in the past 12 months is that pharma companies are beginning to um, move into this pink box here. So um, changes made to a study protocol, for example, um, as a result of patient input. Companies are beginning to consult with patients around study protocols and really use that to drive their decisions. Um, another example might be a patient support program that is designed or co-created with a patient panel or with individual patients so that they know that they've um, addressed those questions and addressed those needs. Um, what is much, much harder to measure is then what is the outcome, the, the patient outcome. And there are some some areas where this can be measured. So, for example, how quickly we can recruit to a study or um, how, um, how many patients are retained in a study because the study design has been optimised for the patient experience. That's something that we can measure. We can also measure things like patients who have achieved better glucose management with their diabetes as a result of a, a well-designed, co-created, well-executed patient support programme. But what companies can't measure yet is, I think, the long-term um, impact of having a more patient-centric approach to their business and that's something we perhaps won't see for five, ten years um, but I think certainly the indicators that we see um, in the things that we are measuring, the things that we can measure are, are really positive but certainly that's something I expect to see evolving in the next um, two to five years um, and is still the big challenge so it's something we're really excited about um, and thank you for your time. <laughs>